Hi everyone. In this video, we'll explore the process of exporting a cloud layer from Terrigen as a volumetric asset in the OpenVDB format and importing it into Blender, which is a free open source 3D application. The goal of this video is not to produce a rendered image from Blender that matches the rendered image from Terrigen, but rather to illustrate that Terrigen cloud layers can be shared with other applications that support the OpenVDB format. Let's start by adding a new cloud layer to the default Terrigen project. We can reposition the viewport to see more of the sky and clouds. Don't forget to copy the changes to the viewport to the current render camera by clicking on the button at the bottom of the 3D preview. We'll let the 3D preview finish rendering, then enable the ray trace preview mode by clicking on the RTP button. This will give us a more accurate view of the cloud layer as we change some of its settings. Now you can spend some time adjusting the cloud layer settings to define the cloud layer as you like. For this video, we'll make some large puffy clouds. By increasing the cloud depth value, then adjusting the cloud layer's noise pattern to make larger but fewer clouds. When you're happy with the shape of your cloud layer, you can define how much detail or the number of sample points to export in the VDB file. You do this by increasing or decreasing the millions of voxel setting found under the Cloud Layers Optimization tab. Higher values subdivide the voxel grid into smaller sections, increasing its resolution, which can be seen in the voxel buffer resolution readout. To export the VDB file, simply right-click on the Cloud Layer node in the Node Network pane and choose Export VDB File. Then navigate to where you want to save the file and give it a descriptive name. While we're still in Terrigen, it's not a bad idea to export the camera and lighting data in an FBX format as well, so that we can load them directly into Blender. From the File menu, select Export FBX Scene to open up the FBX export window. For this video, we don't need to export the nulls or animation, so I'll uncheck them and export the file. Let's create a new Blender project, then import the FBX file with a Terrigen camera and light. Since we're using the imported Terrigen camera and light, we can disable Blender's default camera and light by selecting them in the outliner and clicking on the Hide in Viewport and Disable in Renders button to the right of their names. Let's rename the imported camera to Terrigen camera so that it's easier to recognize in the project. Finally, let's make this camera the active camera in Blender. To do that, Click on the Scene Properties button and select Terrigen Camera from the Camera drop-down list. Then either select View, Viewport, Camera from the menu choices above the Viewport pane, or press 0 on your keyboard's numpad. By default, Blender sets the imported camera's maximum clipping plane to 40 meters, which is far too short a distance in which to see our cloud layer with its radius of 50 kilometers. To increase the viewing distance, Click on the camera's Object Data Properties button and increase the clip end value so that it's larger than our cloud layer's radius. Now let's import the VDB file we just saved by selecting Add, Volume, Import Open VDB from the menu above the viewport pane, or use the keyboard shortcut Shift A. Depending on your VDB file, you may notice that the cloud layer is not visible, or that it is rotated vertically instead of horizontally, which is because in Blender, the z-axis is the up vector, but in Terrigen, the y-axis is the up vector. 
We can compensate for this by rotating the cloud 90 degrees on its x-axis. Now we should see that the cloud layer is visible in the viewport and looks something like it did in Terrigen in terms of shape and size. The next step is to apply a volume material to the cloud layer. To do this, click on the Material Properties button. Then click on the New button, which will add a principled volume material to the cloud object. Let's change the render engine to Cycles in order to take advantage of GPU rendering and see the clouds at higher resolution and detail. To do that, click on the Render Properties button and select Cycles from the Render Engine drop-down menu. Then set the device parameter to GPU Compute. By default, Blender sets the maximum light bounces for a volumetric item to zero. So open the Light Paths section and increase the value for the volume setting to a higher value. We'll start with a value of 12 in order to match the total number of bounces parameter. Finally, change the viewport shading mode to Render. Let's add a simple sky blue color to act as our backdrop. Under the World Properties, click on the color parameter and select RGB from the drop down list. Then use the color wheel to pick a sky blue color. The backdrop is adding a lot of blue bounce light to the clouds, but we can compensate for that if we repurpose the light gray cube object that's already in the project to act as a ground plane. Select the cube in the outliner and under the object properties, increase the scale X and scale Y parameters. Let's render a frame to see how the cloud looks before modifying any of its material properties. For this test render, we can reduce the max samples value so that it renders faster. Then press F12 to render the image. Here's the rendered frame. Now if we compare this image to a rendered image from Terrigen, we can see that the Terrigen cloud is brighter and more evenly lit as the light is scattered throughout the cloud layer. There's also finer wispy detail in the Terrigen render, which is partially due to the resolution or number of sample points contained in the VDB file. We can control the look of the cloud in Blender by first adjusting the material assigned to the cloud, and then adjust the way in which the points are sampled in the volume. With the cloud selected in the outliner, click on its Material Properties button to display the principal volume shader's parameters. Let's make the cloud's volume scattering color completely white by clicking on the color setting and setting the value to 1.0. We can also reduce the apparent thickness of the cloud by reducing the material's density setting. Getting the correct value can take some experimentation. For this video, I've settled on a density value of 0.05. Having made the adjustments to the materials, we can now focus on how best to sample the volume itself. When lighting a volume with a distant light, such as our imported sunlight, it's often more efficient to sample the volume using the distance method. On the other hand, if you have a light source illuminating the clouds within the volume itself, or a combination of both these lighting methods, then the other volume sampling options may be more efficient. For this video, we'll set the sampling method to distance. We'll also change the interpolation method to cubic because it's higher quality, although a bit slower than linear, to render. Finally, we can allow the light to scatter a bit more throughout the cloud volume if we increase the number of light paths for the volume. Be sure to increase both the total number of max bounces as well as the volume value because the renderer will stop at whichever value is less. Now we can render the frame by pressing F12 on your keyboard. In closing, you can see that the cloud layer has been successfully imported into Blender and rendered. Be aware that large cloud layers such as this one with a radius of 50 kilometers will require many sample points in order to retain the fine details that are seen in the Terrigen render. This may present a challenge if the resolution of the VDB file exceeds the amount of VRAM on your graphics card, and you may need to resort to CPU-based rendering instead of GPU-based rendering. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. 
Be sure to subscribe to the Planetside Software channel for more video tutorials and content. Thank <laughs> you.